we now have this keyword that's coming through that we can work with inside of our views. So it's time to actually get the data from the database, validate that it's actually there, and then do something different. So back into our views, I'm gonna work specifically in the function-based view for now because the function-based view and the class-based view get method are virtually the exact same. I'll explain the difference shortly, but let's go ahead and just work in here. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna actually import the short code itself or the model itself. So from models, import cur URL. And the cur URL is the model class, of course. So we can say object equals to cur URL dot objects dot get. And we're already passing in the short code. So in our model, we can actually look for that particular short code. So going back in there, we'll do short code equals to short code. And then what we can do is return, instead of format being shortcode, we'll just do object.url. So we're gonna assume that this object exists and then we're gonna return back the URL and it's just gonna say hello URL. Now if we refresh in here, let's save it and go to A instead of B, we get this, we get this does not exist value, right? So this is an exception that would cause your, your actual app to kind of run into errors, right? At least for this particular short code. I think we had one called ABC123. Um, no, we did not. So let's actually go into the admin and take a look at the different short codes we had. Oh, I think at one point we had ABC123, but we don't now. I called it new admin in one of the URL uh, examples, but I'm gonna change it back to admin just so we're all on the same page as far as that goes. I click on this and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Google one put that in here, press enter, and now it gives me back that object, right? So I used the proper shortcode and it gave me back that object. But we need to do something with this does not exist. So there's a lot of different ways on how we can actually handle this. Inside of our views, we can do this try block, and that's object equals to that get function. So we can say this, and then it, we can run an exception. And I'll just say accept, and this is for every sort of thing. And I'll just say object equals to cur url dot objects dot all and then we'll just do first so as in the first one in there and that right there will then replace that error oh, we want to get rid of that line at 11 because the try block is here replace that error and that's what happens so what just what just happened was it put the code inside of a try block and it caught all exceptions any kind of exception and then it was going to do that specifically this is okay, it works, but it's not the best method. Um, another method would be QS, as in query set, get, your, get URL dot objects dot filter now, and we'll do short code, underscore, underscore, I exact equals to short code. That is, the short code that's being passed is exactly the other short code, or is exactly what this short code is. Um, capitalized, lowercase, it doesn't matter. So if I did dot upper, we'll see what that does in a second. And then I'll say if qs.exists, so if the query set has anything in there, then we can say object equals to qs.first. So just like what we did here, this is a way to get the first item inside of that query set. And actually with this query set, we can also say and qs.count equals equals to one, because really we only want one. Now this is a, a much better way to call git when we're not positive about the shortcode or that it even exists, but we don't wanna have to run the try exception block. So this is just a little bit better there for that specifically. And we can see this if I come back and refresh, I get that same join CFE and that's because of this right here. So I'm gonna comment that out save it and refresh and it says local variable object reference before assignment so that has to do with this so i'll just do object now i'll just do object underscore url equals to none and then now down here if it actually exists object url equals to object dot url so using this variable now instead and paste that there so i refresh and i get none if i grab that one from the URL that we already used, that short code, we press enter, and now actually brings back that URL. Okay, so that's all right too. Um, this is if we wanted to have some sort of default. 
there's yet another thing, and that is the it's going to be a shortcut called git object or 404. So we're going to come in and import git underscore object or 404. That is git whatever the object is or raise a 404 error. This is probably the best one if we don't want to have a default action or another action that would happen if it didn't exist except for a 404 error. So let's see what I mean by this. And I'll say object equals to git object or 404. I put in the class that we're going for and that's cur URL. And then I put in the name of the actual query that we're trying to make, or we could just do the name of the field and we can set that equal to the past field or the argument that is this short code is this one. This has to do with the field itself. So again, if I change this to ABC, this would be ABC and then I would have to change this to ABC as well. All right. So hopefully that part makes sense. But anyway, so let's change that back to short code. And this is now the best way to get our object, at least for what we're about to do. And again, I'm going to have to do something like this and we'll comment this out for a second, save it, refresh in here. Google's still coming through, but if I put something else, it now gives me a page not found. It wasn't the exception error like we saw before. It is now just page not found. Now, this is good and bad. The reason it's good is because if something's not found, that's what it's going to do. It's going to render your page not found template, which we'll talk about later. But it also um, allows you to just have two lines of code, or really, we don't actually need that, that same sort of URL function. We can bring this back to object.url and comment this out. That's now one, two lines in this function. We refresh in here and it's still doing the same thing, right? So if I copy this, pasted it in here, it's still bringing all that stuff back. This is probably the preferred method long-term. However, again, the big caveat here is if we wanted to have something else happen other than that 404 error, we could do those other messages that we just talked about. I just want the 404 error to happen. I want them to know that the URL shortener has no idea where you're trying to go. So it's going to raise that 404 error. Um, this is for many, many other reasons too, but it's kind of like the standard thing when you see on a website, when somebody goes somewhere that they, that doesn't exist, this is what the error is going to be. So I'll leave that other stuff in there just for your own notes. It will be deleted later, but now that we've got this, I can actually come in here and copy this exact same line and bring it into my class-based view. This is something that class-based views are all about. And this right here is the get method. So when we click on a link that is called the get method, you can also see this in our terminal that it's going to show you that there was a get call. I can do it several times. So I refreshed it several times and we see that there's this get call in here. So each one of these is that get method. If we go into our terminal and let's go back into this and do add a new URL, I'm going to just say HTTP CFE blog slash two, and I'll just hit save and continue. I can now look at my terminal and I see that there was a post method handled or a post method that actually happened. So that's the biggest difference between uh, function based views and class based views, class based views. You have to explicitly write the method you want to handle. So in this case, I am now having it. So my other, my other class based view or this class based view can actually handle a post method. We're not going to test that specifically, but this right here is how you'd handle a post method where the function based view will handle get and post methods, or in fact, any method by default. So we can print out the request dot method. We can print that out at any time or sorry, lowercase method. So request method, we can print that out every single time. So if we go back in and refresh, we'll see that it says get. We also see the terminal itself logging that it was a get method. But if I press it out, we see get at every time, or I could obviously do something like print method is and new line, save it, refresh. And we see, uh, there it is method is okay. So that's, that's like uh, essentially what's the difference. The main difference between that, although class based views are more portable, that means that we can move them around a little bit easier than function based views. 
but they also take more code to write. So sometimes there's a trade off of using them. So if we actually looked at this function base view and I'll leave the notes, I'll actually leave this as notes just all the way at the bottom into three quotes. And just so you guys can see that later, but I wanna just clean this up so we can compare the two functions and the two ways of doing it. So assuming that this post is not here, we've got four lines here versus three lines. So the three line one is actually more efficient and therefore you might end up doing something like that. But again, class-based views are more portable, so they both have their, their pluses and minuses. Okay, so we did a lot here, but we aren't quite there yet as far as how this shortener works. We were able to get the shortener, otherwise raise a 404 error, but now what we need to do is actually redirect them to the proper URL, whatever that may be. So if you have any questions on here, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.